today, we're going to talk about whether free trade destroys jobs. First, most people don't realize that U.S. trade barriers are already very low, even without trade deals. So a free trade deal with, say, South Korea would lower U.S. tariffs from about 5% down to 0%, whereas they would lower South Korean tariffs from a much higher level down to zero. So most free trade deals simply force other countries to lower their barriers down to where ours already are. But most people still think that the U.S. gains jobs when we sell our goods to other countries and that we lose jobs when we buy goods from other countries, especially if those other countries have lower wages than we do. The assumption they're making is that there is a fixed amount of work to be done, and all we can do is fight over who gets to do it. This is what economists call the lump of labor fallacy. Here's an example of how that kind of thinking breaks down. In 2002, the Bush administration put tariffs on imported steel. The idea was to protect U.S. steel workers. In response, industries that use steel in their production, like automakers and appliance factories, started moving their production overseas, where they could get cheap steel. As it turns out, there are 10 times as many people working in steel using industries as there are people actually producing steel. Economists calculate that the tariff saved about 40,000 jobs in steel making, but that they cost 100,000 jobs in steel using industries. Okay, so maybe it's completely stupid to block imports of raw materials like steel. What about finished goods like televisions? Say that because of labor costs, a TV made here in the United States costs $400, whereas a TV imported from South Korea costs only $200. If I buy the US-made TV, I'm employing American workers at the factory. But if I buy the TV from South Korea, I still have $200 in my pocket. I'm not going to light that money on fire. I'm going to take my family to the ball game. So yes, there's fewer jobs at the TV factory, but there's more jobs at the ballpark. Trade doesn't create or destroy jobs, it just moves them around in the economy. Same thing with tech outsourcing. If a business can make a website faster and cheaper by outsourcing the work to Bangalore, it's not gonna light those savings on fire. It can cut prices for consumers to gain an edge in the marketplace, or it can invest those savings in all the processes around the website. Product development, marketing, supply chain, all of those functions create jobs here in the U.S. Moreover, jobs in America's export industries, like aerospace, entertainment, and high technology, pay higher wages than the low-skilled manufacturing jobs that they're replacing. But don't take my word for it that trade doesn't destroy jobs. In 1993, the United States joined the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. Over the rest of that decade, the U.S. economy added 21 million private sector jobs, a 23% increase. I'm not saying that NAFTA created most of those jobs. It's just that you're swimming upstream against the data to claim that it led to a loss of jobs. So the next time you're driving in your Japanese car, wearing clothes made in Bangladesh, and sipping Colombian coffee, put yourself at ease. You're not putting Americans out of a job. Who is that econ guy? I'm Patrick Walsh. I'm an associate professor of economics at St. Michael's College near Burlington, Vermont.